Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested, expert formulated. Use discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. All right, folks, Big Paul here tonight, and we are going to run through a chest and tricep workout. It is my push B workout. I mentioned in previous videos how I split up the push into chest and shoulder focused workouts. Main reason I did that is because I blew out my shoulder last year. My shoulder's still a mess and I can't really jam both into one session and recover. So I had to split them in half because of the torn labrum. Uh, I'm not looking as good as I did a few weeks ago. I'm in full bloat lord status now in the off season, transitioning with the rebound. But we're gonna go through this workout. I'm gonna show you how I train chest. You don't need bench press, by the way. I'm gonna let you in on that secret before we start. We're gonna get started here in just one second. Right, folks, first thing I'm going to start off with is the Atlantis chest fly machine. Sometimes I do dumbbell flies. The only thing I don't like about dumbbell flies is there's not really much resistance on the contracted part portion of the movement. It's only the stretch portion, whereas this is going to get you through a full range of motion. Sometimes I'll swap out for, for cable flies as well. I'll do that. That's something also that I'll do. Um, for setting this up for the range of motion, I usually go one peg back, and I know that's sort of not as much as what most people would do, but once again, I have a screwed up shoulder, so there's only so deep I can go, but uh, with this, you want to get as deep as you can without, without causing pain in your shoulder. I start off light with this and do a couple warm-up sets, and probably in the 15 rep range that I do these in. Now, I, I know, um, you know, some people will do their heavy pressing movement first, and I used to train that way. You are going to get more out of your pressing movement that way, but what has happened is I've gotten older for injuries and whatnot. I, I tend to like to pre-exhaust a little bit, so I don't have to use as much weight on pressing movements. I'm a pretty strong presser, and I feel like the type of weights that I need to use to get an effective workout now on a pressing movement are getting into the dangerous territory. I don't want to tear a pec, so I have to be extremely cautious with that. I really don't bench press anymore. I mostly just do machines, dumbbells, and that sort of thing. But I'll do, I'll do a couple warm-up sets with this, and then I'll get into my working sets, which are about 40 or 50 pounds heavier than these. Good stretch at the bottom of this. And for you bros, you bros that are, want to work out intense, how you gauge your intensity is by the amount of butt crack sweat that you leave on the pad. All right, guys, next up I have the Atlantis Chest Press. This machine is badass. I was so excited when the gym, I work out at the Shop Gym in Ashburn, Virginia, probably the best gym on the East Coast, but I was sh excited when we got this thing. This thing is freaking awesome. I don't do flat bench presses or barbell bench presses anymore. I just feel like at the part of my bodybuilding journey that I'm in that they're too dangerous as far as pec tears go. Not to say that you couldn't tear a pec on this one, it's absolutely possible, but having the stability of this being a fixed plane of motion reduces the odds of a pec tear. And I'll tell you, pec tears seem to be the most common bodybuilding injury that we see. I try to be extremely cautious with this. Now, when you're 100, benching 135 pounds for eight reps, the danger's not so high. But when you get up to where you're pressing 315, 365, 405 for reps, like where you are when you're a super heavyweight bodybuilder, the risk goes way up. And I feel like at that point, you might want to sub things out with a machine, which is what I do it now. Also, age plays a factor in it, years in the gym. I, when you're over 40, I, I really do not do barbell movements that often anymore. I pretty much have eliminated them from my routine. And so we'll go with this first for our pressing movement, our heavy pressing movement. We'll get into it in just a second. All right, so for a compound movement like this, I usually start off with somewhere in the 10 to 12 rep range. 
at the point I'm at in my meso cycle right now, we're just kind of coming out of contest prep and not pushing really hard. I keep the weights more moderate and we'll do somewhere 10 to 12 reps for three to four sets where I'm at right now in my meso cycle. And this machine, you can adjust the seat, you can adjust the, uh, the, uh, the how high the handles are for the weights. I have this on setting three if you have this machine. For the, uh, for the handles, that's where I have it at. And I use the wide grip on this. And I'll usually do, like, like I said, 10 to 12 reps. So we'll get into it right now. Now in the off season, I'll work up on this. I'll work, you can see I have a hard time getting my big ass out of this thing, I get stuck in it. But in the off season, usually I'll work up to about six plates for 10 to 12 reps. Right now I'm taking it easy. So four plates on each side for 10 to 12 reps. And no, people, that does not directly correlate to bench press. It's not 405. I don't know what it would equate to on a bench press. It's probably like 275, something like that if I were to take a guess. All right, folks. I want to give this sucker a try. This is the Jim Lecco wide chest standing whatever machine. I don't know what the fuck you would call this thing. But I tried it out last week. I actually really like it. It, it feels sort of like a dip of some type. I, I don't know how to describe it, but it feels like lower pec. Um, I'm going to back up for a second. What a, I mean, just throw the chest press machine. I was at my son's band concert the other night, and I must have had about eight middle school boys ask me, how much do you bench press, bro? <laughs> that is a question I get all the freaking time. How much do I bench press? <laughs> I gave up caring about how much I bench press a long time ago. I could give a fat flying fuck how much I bench press. When you get on the stage, the bodybuilding stage, the judges aren't asking you how much you bench press, so I really don't care. At some point a long time ago, I was <clears throat> up using four plates. Uh, but I don't even remember, to be honest with you. I, I'm not a power lifter, I'm a bodybuilder. Um, that's not to say that progressing your weights aren't important. But anyway, side rain over. We're going to get into these Jim Lecco, uh, whatever this machine, wide chest standing. All right, folks, I want to take a quick break from this episode to tell you about the new e-course that Kurt Havens and I have put together, The Scientific Principles of Anabolics and PEDs. This is the most comprehensive PED e-course ever put together with over 80 modules, including intros to PEDs, major steroid profiles, competitor off-season cycles, non-competitor cycles, contest prep cycles, HGH fundamentals, insulin fundamentals, side effect management, safer use concepts, fat loss agents, estrogen management, and advanced PED and hypertrophy science. It is the best course out there of its kind. Go check it out. Link is in the video description below. All right, so we're going to give this sucker a try out. I don't know if you can see it or not in the video, but there are two places to stand. There's one that's wide, there's one that's narrow. The one that's wide is a little elevated here. I guess that's to cut down on the on the butt crack sweat so people don't see your butt crack sweat on the, uh, on the, uh, on the machines. I, it's a sign of intensity, though, bros. Butt crack sweat. That's how everybody knows you're working out hard. You want to leave the... Uh, leave the snail trail on the machines. That's why they have the, the sanitary wipes over here. Anyway, we're gonna give this a try, so if I murder the form on this, please cut me some slack in the comment section, or just tell me I suck like everybody does anyway. Um, so I'm gonna try this thing out. i tell you what I feel. This feels a lot like doing a dip to me. I really feel at the bottom of my chest. I may even need to lighten up the weight a little bit. When I'm trying a new machine, I like to start off with light weight, get my form perfected, and then start progressing the weight up until I get it figured out. But this thing's really interesting. I've never seen anything like this before, and I really do feel it in the bottom portion of my chest. I don't know if you can see it, but I, I, I definitely feel that in the bottom. I've got a pump in the bottom portion of my chest. 
is a very interesting machine. I've, I've never seen anything like this before. We're gonna do the Panada dip machine. This thing is badass. We just got this about six months ago here at the shop, Jim. This thing is so sweet, man. I, the Panada machines, if you can talk to Jim owner into getting some Panada stuff, the Panada stuff is top notch. Now with triceps, we talked about it before. We talked about it on the shoulder workout that I like to hit the triceps. With, a, with the tension on the fully contracted position and tension on the fully stretched position. So you want movements that are going to work both. So we'll do the dip for the fully contracted and also hits a little bit of chest. And we'll, uh, there's another machine next door here. Uh, you don't have to see it right now, but we'll, we'll do an overhead Panada extension for the stretch position. So we're gonna get into that now. All right, I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm vibing to some shitty club music that's playing here in the background of the shop gym. I usually like death metal, that's my preference. The video guys over here, my man Gary, back here, he, he likes he likes Drake. You guys didn't seem to like Drake. I'm all right with Drake. I, I'm, I'm cool with Drake, but we're gonna do these dips. Uh, I, I'll move the weight up on this. I got two plates on each side right now, but we'll start off with this. I don't get too far up on these because I'm really worried about the contracted portion of it. I just don't have a lot of range of motion in my shoulders because they're all beat up. So I'm worried about getting a good contraction on these. This Panada machine is pretty fucking cool because you can set it up to where you can do each side unilaterally or you can do it both. It's got a, I don't know if you can see the handle up here in the front. There go the bed springs in the background with the shitty club music. Somebody's getting it. It's helping me motivate me to do my dips. All right, guys. All right, I'm I'm vibing with the club music now. It's start, I'm starting I'm starting to lock in. I'm ready I'm ready to hit the hit the club with Gary and Colin over here. Hit on some young ladies. Although I don't think that's gonna work. I, let's just be honest. I'm gonna be standing in the corner awkwardly, making people feel weird. That's that's what I do at the club. <laughs> Those days are so behind me at this point. Anyway, we're gonna do some tricep overhead extensions on this beautiful Panada super French press machine made by Italians. So <laughs> this machine, I this is a I'm not I'm not entirely sold on this one yet. I, I have weird feelings about it. Like I get it, but I have really long arms. I don't know that I entirely fit into this one. I want to like it, but it is a very well constructed machine, but I think I might be too tall for it. It might be just the simple truth of it, but I'm gonna try it out and maybe I can vibe with some club music while we're doing it. The secret to these overhead tricep extensions is to get a good depth at the bottom so you get a good stretch on your triceps. Really, that's the most important part of the movement in my opinion. I don't think the contractive portion of it is that important because you're not really placing that much load because of the way the physics of this goes. Just like if you're going out to the club on a Friday night as an old man, it's vitally important if you want to have success to find the girl with daddy issues, just like it is vitally important to get a good tricep stretch. So you want to know what works for you and stick with what works for you. Remember this daddy issues and good tricep stretch. I think this feels right, I don't know. I'm banging the back of my head with this thing. But this is about as deep as my broken ass shoulders and triceps will let me get. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.